Hello everybody and welcome to the seventh and final video in our series of videos on the Irish parliamentary tradition in the 19th century. As always we begin with our learning outcomes so by the end of this presentation you guys should know what the plan of campaign was, you guys should know the two incidents that, led, that uh, drew liberals and home rulers closer together and third you guys should be able to give an account of the O'Shea affair and how it led to Parnell's downfall. So with the defeat of the first Home Rule Bill in 1886, the Conservatives now had power in the House of Commons and they didn't need the support of Parnell and his Home Rule party to rule and so they decided to completely ignore Home Rule. So the Home Rule party embarked on a new policy led by some of the younger members of the party uh, called the Plan of Campaign. Now the leaders of this were William O'Brien, who was of course the editor of Parnell's uh, newspaper, The United Irishman, uh, John Dillon, who was a radical member of the party whose father was one of the organisers of the Young Irlander Rebellion of 1848. Another man uh, at the bottom uh, right hand uh, screen there called Timothy Harrington. So the plan was something kind of like collective bargaining. So if a landlord refused to lower his demands voluntarily, the tenants would come together and they would offer him reduced rents, uh, something that they felt was fair. If he declined this offer, they were to stop paying rents and instead pay the money they offered him into an estate fund. And this would help protect the tenants who were evicted. So while this wasn't as widespread as the land, the land war, uh, it caused the Conservative Party in power to bring in a new uh, coercion bill in 1887 called the New Crimes Act to try to stop this agrarian agitation. Now the plan was also condemned by the Pope and the Catholic Church, but they continued to use it. And even though Parnell himself was afraid that it might upset uh, the Liberals, who were now uh, Parnell's only hope of home rule, um, the plan continued. Uh, but the strict coercion bills backfired uh, on the Conservatives as the police fired on a crowd in Cork, killing three people, which became known as the Mitchellstown Massacre in 1887. And this was the first thing that drew the Liberals closer to the Home Rule Party. They were in solidarity with the Home Rulers. They saw the fight that the tenant farmers were fighting against the landlords as something similar to um, something that they were very passionate about, which was the fight of the workers in England for um, better conditions in factories. Another incident that drew the Liberals and the Home Rule Party closer together was a conspiracy to implicate Parnell in the Phoenix Park murders. We remember the Phoenix Park murders that took place days after Parnell was released from Kilmaine in jail. Well, there was a series of letters were published in the Times newspaper in England, which seemed to show that Parnell actually supported these murders. A special commission was set up to investigate. Uh, Parnell insisted upon this, and eventually the letters were shown to be forgeries or a fakes written by a man called Richard Piggott, uh, leading to the incident being known as the Piggott forgeries. So Parnell um, was found innocent by the commission uh, and vindicated from these allegations in 1889. Parnell's popularity was at its height. Uh, his popularity really soared at this time. And he and Gladstone were working closely together. Remember Gladstone was the leader of the Liberals to try to draft a second Home Rule Bill um, uh, for when they would get back into power. However, uh, a scandal was about to hit that would ultimately end any chance of Parnell getting home rule. So in 1880, we have to go back in time here, Parnell uh, and a woman called Catherine O'Shea fell madly in love. The only problem was that Catherine was married to a man called Captain William O'Shea, who was a fellow Irish politician uh, along with Parnell. The marriage was over in everything but name uh, when the relationship between Parnell and, and Catherine began. And while most politicians came to know about the relationship over the years, um, Catherine and, and Charles Stuart Parnell had three children together, it was kept a secret from the public. However, in December of 1889, Captain O'Shea filed for divorce when he didn't receive money he had assumed would be coming to him from being married to Catherine. It was an inheritance from her um, auntie he thought he was going to be getting a very rich lady. When he didn't get that, he filed for divorce. He named Parnell as the reason for the divorce 
uh, Catherine and Parnelda didn't contest any of the things that Captain O'Shea said as they as they wanted the proceedings to go through quickly. Uh, he blackened their names with scandalous and false accounts about the relationship, uh, which he had known about from very early on, um, but denied that he did know about it. Um, uh, but again, they just wanted the divorce to go through nice and quickly, Parnell and Catherine, so that they could actually be married. With the scandal public, uh, Gladstone told Parnell that he would have to retire from politics and come back when the scandal had died down, or there would be no chance of home rule and the continuation of the Liberal Alliance. Um, Parnell came out fighting against this liberal attempt to tell him to retire by publishing this thing called A, a Manifesto to the People of Ireland. However, he lost the support of many people, influential people including Lynn Church, influential people in America who were of course funding a lot of the uh, Irish campaigns and of course unfortunately um, influential support within his own party. On the 1st of December 1890, a party meeting was held in committee room 15 of Westminster where the Home Rule Party, which had been built on unity thanks to Parnell and his party pledge, um, it split in two with the majority going against Parnell and his decision not to retire uh, into what was known as the anti-Parnellite faction. Parnell went back to Ireland to campaign for support. However, he found a bitterly divided country um, at one particular campaign. He had lime thrown in his eyes. Insults were made against uh, his now wife, Catherine O'Shea, which uh, enraged him. Uh, but he continued to campaign uh, and but was defeated in, in, in three by-elections. His, can his candidates were defeated in three by-elections. Parnell's health had already been bad and the strain of months of campaigning eventually led to his health giving in. And at the age of 45, Parnell died in his new wife's arms in, on the 6th of October, 1891. Uh, Parnell brought Ireland as close as it had come to its own parliament in 1886 since the Act of Union. Uh, and his death was mourned by all who became known as the, the uncrowned king of Ireland. In 1893, um, Gladstone tried to once again get Home Rule passed in the terms he and Parnell had been discussing. And while this time the second Home Rule Bill did pass the House of Commons, it was defeated in the House of Lords. And Ireland would have to wait another 20 years for a Home Rule Bill to be introduced. So that brings us to the end of our presentation. So by now you guys should know what the plan of campaign was. You guys should know the two incidents that drew the Liberal and Home Rulers closer together. And finally, you guys should be able to give an account of the O'Shea affair and how it led to Parnell's death. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys got something good from this video.